Hey folks, Chad Perkins here for Maxon, and it is my pleasure and honor to be able to introduce to you a brand new tool called Maxon Studio that I believe is going to revolutionize the way that we all work in Adobe After Effects. Now, before we get into that, let's just back up and talk a little bit about reusing work in After Effects. And basically there are three ways. We can use presets, and presets have been in After Effects for ages, and they're really helpful. But they effectively only save settings on selected properties and not the layers themselves, so they're pretty limited. Another way that we can reuse work that we've done in After Effects is through a Mogurt. Now, Mogurts are great. They do a great job of allowing you to make After Effects projects simple, and you could kind of browse them a little bit, but they only work in Premiere. So all the stuff that you do in After Effects, if you want to reuse that or pass that along to a colleague or whatever, you're kind of stuck. It's only for Premiere. So then that leaves us the third way, and that is After Effects templates. Now, templates are the most robust way to reuse After Effects work, but it's basically just like using an entire After Effects project, which means that it doesn't adapt to your project settings. You can't visually browse and preview the templates, and it's also really easy to accidentally delete or otherwise mess with something that breaks the entire project. And also, because templates are After Effects projects, they are typically really cluttered and tough to tweak and customize. I mean, when looking at a template like this, there's just so much going on. How do I know which layers are controllers and which ones I'm supposed to adjust? You know, and this template is actually more simple and organized and labeled better than many others that I've seen. So enter Maxon Studio. Maxon Studio is a revolutionary new system to browse, apply, and edit what we call capsules. So then what are capsules? You could kind of think of capsules as like the next generation of templates that are aware of the content, the compositions, the settings that you have in your project when they are applied. Let's take a look at this in action. So what we can do is we can go to the window menu to call up Maxon Studio. Just go right there to Maxon Studio. Or what all the cool kids do is just use the shortcut, which works anywhere in After Effects, and it's amazing, is Control Alt Spacebar on PC and Control Option Spacebar on Mac. So basically Control Alt Spacebar. And that calls up Max on Studio. It loads for a second as it gets all of the capsules and the capsule previews loaded up. And there you have it, this gorgeous UI, this floating window that can be docked. You can just grab Max on Studio dock it like a regular panel if you want to. And also its UI is responsive. So as I stretch it out here, you can see that now we could see that this says discover and edit. And there's other panels that we'll talk about in a minute that pop up as well. But then as we shrink this down, those go away. So it's this really, really beautiful, well-designed UI. And here we have all of these capsules that we can choose from. Now there's this handy search bar up here that I can use. I'm just gonna type in infographics and see what comes up. There's all sorts of keywords and stuff like that, so these are really easy to browse. There's categories up at the top, a lot of different ways that we can search through these objects. And you'll notice that as you put your mouse over these thumbnails that they preview. And when I go over this one here, graphic synthesis, that's the one that I want. I can favorite it to make it easy to find later. I can apply it, or I could simply download it without applying it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply this. But I want you to notice that I have three different compositions here. I have one that's 720p at 30 frames per second, one that's 1080p at 60 frames per second, and one that's 4K at 24 frames per second. And I'm not going to input anything into Maxon Studio, I'm just gonna apply it to each one of these comps and see what happens. So here's this graphic synthesis comp, I'm just gonna click plus to apply that takes a second to uh, download it. I'm gonna try to talk over all of these so you can just see in real time like how long that takes. And it's been done for a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and apply it to this one. And then I'm gonna go apply it to the 4K one. Now here is the magic of Maxon Studio right here. This well, one of the many things that's magical about it. I'm gonna resize this and actually maybe I'll dock my uh, effect controls panel over here with it. There we go. And move this over. And as I go to my 720 at 30 frames per second, 
and I scroll, you could see that everything works perfectly. And as I go into the nested pre-comp here, as I double click to go inside, you can see that this composition that created for my 720p at 30 frames per second is 29.97 frames per second. As I go to my 1080p that's bigger, it looks perfect. And as I go into this pre-comp, Look at this, 59.94 frames per second. I didn't have to input any of that stuff. It just automatically detected that from the composition. And of course, same thing at 4K here. Animation looks great. I can make that full screen. So, oops, make it full screen so you can see that there. So yeah, 4K, it doesn't matter the resolution as long as it's 16 by nine. The aspect ratio is actually important. It's gotta be 16 by nine, but pretty much any size at 16 by nine, it's going to detect and automatically make adjustments for, and again, to frame rate. If I go into this 4K comp, you can see that it's 23.976. So I don't even have to think about what my settings are, frame rate, any of that stuff. Maxon Studio will automatically detect and figure it out and make all the adjustments it needs to to make it work but it gets better. I'm gonna go over to my 720p comp, that's Infographics 04, and I'm gonna go back into Maxon Studio, and it's not just that we can browse templates really easily with these gorgeous animated previews, it's not just that they can be stored in the cloud and that we could favorite them and search them and all that stuff, and it's not just that it's intelligently applying it, but it's also that we have this handy dandy edit page that is really one of the stars of the show. I've already said there's a bunch of stars of the show, but. Really, another one of the stars of the show is the edit page. I can click on the edit page and I can see all of the stuff that I've applied all throughout my project from Maxon Studio. And here are the three different infographics that I've just applied. So infographics uh, 04 2 was the uh, 4K one. This is the 1080p one. This is the 720p one. So if I go over here, I have in the edit page everything that I would want to edit. I don't make, maybe I don't want it to uh, say graphic synthesis. Maybe I want to say um, nerd things. <laughs> And then instantly this changes here. I could change the, the subtext. I could change the colors. Maybe I don't want this line to be pink. Maybe I want it to be green and like a really uh, nauseous color of green so it really sticks out. It's just that easy. I don't have to go digging through like you know a bunch of pre-comps and a bunch of like layers trying to guess what is what. It's all right here for me summed up in this very, very easy to tweak way. And we'll dig into this more as we go. And also, you know, these are set up in such a way that I could delete a lot of these layers and the file still works. I could just like randomly select the layer and I'm just gonna go and delete this one. I don't even know what I'm doing, but I can go and I could delete it. I'm just like selecting the uh, 05 things and just uh, deleting it. And you could see that it's going away, but I'm not getting any error messages. So these files are created in such a way that you can go in and manually tweak them if you want to, and you don't have to worry that they're super fragile and that everything's gonna break as soon as you start adjusting any parameters. It's fantastic. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and hold the command or control key while I'm dragging the name of the panel around so it floats again, because I kinda like that. I like having it uh, on top. And actually, what I realistically, when I use it, I put it on a second monitor, so it's over here, but you know, you're not gonna be able to see it that way. So I'm trying to make this all work on one monitor. I'm gonna go to the Discover page, which is where our graphics are. I'm gonna go ahead and X out of this uh, search result. And right now we're looking at all the capsules. And Maxon Studio ships with over 250 capsules. And typically we don't you know, announce our plans of what's coming in the future, but I can tell you that we are going to continually add to this pile a lot in the future. So already there's over 250 capsules that are incredible, uh, gorgeously designed by most of these by Candy Mustache. There's beautiful, beautiful work that you can go in and play with as we'll see. But you know, even scrolling through 250 options, it's a lot. So I have these categories here at the top that I can use to play with. I have text, motion graphics, effects, transitions, and backgrounds. Let's start by looking at text. And for this, we're actually gonna see how Maxon Studio works. So I have these empty comps ready, willing, to be loaded up here. I'm gonna go to my text start comp. And actually I'm going to 
just do a little bit of housekeeping very quickly to get rid of uh, that stuff. So we just have that comp. We can see what we do. Now there's nothing in this composition, but you do need a composition. So Maxon Studio is, again, it's not a template. It's not a preset. So it doesn't apply to a layer. It doesn't apply to a project. It needs a composition. It could be a blank composition, but it just needs to be a composition to apply to. And I'm going to go to this title here. And this is... Um, Oh, something big title 12, I think it's called. And I'm going to go ahead and click the little plus icon to apply it to this composition. And I don't need Maxon Studio. Well, I'm going to go ahead and dock it, even though it's against my nature to, to dock it. But so I preview this and you can see what it does. Very cool stuff. But yellow doesn't really fit the vibe of what I'm going for. So I'm going to go back to the edit page. Click on that here. By the way, when you're in the Discover page, once you apply a capsule, you can see this little icon turns blue, letting you know that this is an applied capsule. And I could just click this to get the edit page too if I want to. And what's kind of cool is again, um, I've already applied this in a final result. And so that is here, but I also have this new instance here. So each instance that you apply from Maxon Studio remembers. And I actually don't even need to be selecting that uh, composition that this is in. So I don't have to go digging through my project to see where all this stuff is. If I know that I want this text to be red instead of blue or whatever, I could just click on it and adjust it from here. It's very, very cool way to work. I know that might not seem like that great, but having this like control system where you can edit all of your graphics at once and not have to go digging through your comps, it's amazing. So anyways, I have this selected here, this title looks really cool, but I actually wanna change the background. So I have here the background in these nice little summed up things in the edit menu. By the way, if you get uh, messed up here, I can click on this button over here on the right to reset back to the default from the capsule. Or I could go over here and click on the stopwatch to animate properties, which is really cool. I'm gonna click on the start color, which is gonna bring up the good old Adobe color picker we all know and love. Make this like a pale pink. And then I'm gonna set the end color to kind of like a, you know, like a, bluish color. So now we have this kind of look, which is kind of cool. And you know, maybe, maybe the, I don't like the uh, black motion. Maybe that feels a little bit heavy. So maybe I'll click on this and maybe take this to white. So now I have this feel, which is totally different. And maybe I'll change the text. So I'll say Maxon Studio. Oops, not Design Studio. I forgot to get rid of the text. It's already there. There we go. So now, there we go. I can also go in and be a little sassy if I want to. You know, if I wanted to take this down, rotate this a little bit, make it look like some kind of like 80s influence thing, just rotate that. It's really cool. I have all kinds of flexibility to change the scale of each text piece, to change the color, placement, anything you could think of, all from this really handy dandy control board. And here's the final that I came up with. It's not much better, basically the same thing we just saw. Let's go to talk about some motion graphics. I'm gonna go ahead and go to another blank composition, go back to my Discover page, go to the motion graphics capsules by clicking motion graphics here at the top. And in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna tweak another one of these and learn a little bit more about this process. And you can see that I've already applied it here, but I'm gonna go ahead and apply this one. This is a nice little logo reveal. This motion graphics category is so amazing. I mean, there's like little like clouds with like rain and like lightning and you know, these big graphics packages were just like big full design on the screen. It's just so gorgeous, little accents and stuff like that. Slideshows, again, little like social media buttons and things like that. It's all fully customizable as we'll see, really incredible. So I'm gonna apply this here, it's logo reveal. Now, as I preview this here, you can see that these little rings go in here and I get these little circles, I get some like particle circle effects, text comes out and that's awesome. But again, this isn't my jam. So I can go to the edit page and I have here the uh, start color and end color. So this is actually a gradient, but we can't really tell. So I'm just gonna change the start color to like a reddish color. And look at that. Already we got something really cool here. And maybe I'll change this text to Maxon Studio. And maybe I'll change the Maxon.net text to, um, I don't know, is really fun to play with or something, I don't know, whatever. Uh, and then I can you know, rotate this, 
I could animate these to be rotating. I could really change this design. Now, as I open up this pre-comp here, the logo reveal, you could see that I have this placeholder comp right here. Lego or logo <laughs> reveal 08 logo placeholder. So I'm gonna double click and open that. And here we have this logo. So then what I can do is put one of my own things in here. One of my own like logos. I'll do that uh, properly this time so that actually works. There we go. And then I can turn this off. Now the brilliance of this is it's set up so I could just set this um, logo in this placeholder comp. And then these objects right here, the adjust logo, work for the logo that I just put in. So because it's set up in the way that it's set up, then all of these settings in studio are now controlling my little skull. So then we have this cool thing. And maybe I want to change the color of those little circles that are coming out, you know, those ones right there. Give it a little bit more contrast. So I'm going to click on this color and I'm going to give it like a minty, slightly minty look. And then we have the little bit of green there. It's gorgeous. Very quickly customized. And again, I could add animation to any of these properties that you mouse over and you see the stopwatch. I could animate them and very easy to customize and create something that looks very different than this initial logo reveal that we started with. Now, let's take it up a notch. Let's look at effects. The effects category is interesting because there's a couple different ways that these effects apply. I'm going to go to Discover, and I'm going to go to the effects category here. Boom. And then we have these effects that we could apply to footage. Now, there's two different ways that Maxon Studio applies effects capsules to footage. One is as an adjustment layer, and another one is, is in a way that you have to go into a nested comp like we looked at and replace the footage. So let's look at both of those very quickly. So I have this footage here of me looking out at the current United States political landscape. And I have these effects transitions. I'm going to go ahead and apply this one here. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and close studio. But look how gorgeous this looks. Beautiful. So again, we got a little bit of bokeh here. We got some particular going on. And this kind of like fades in in this really organic way. I love it. But what I really want to draw your attention to is that this effect, this particular effect applies as an adjustment layer on top of your footage layer. And if I open up studio again, using that keyboard shortcut, control alt space, and then I go to transitions, excuse me, not transitions, effects, I'm getting ahead of myself, go to effects. Then you can see that we have some of these different effects where we have like multiple kind of like mirrors, like a glass effect, like refractions of our main subject in some of these. And so I've already gone ahead and uh, applied these. I've already gone ahead and applied this. You can just see like the final thing here in this particular composition. So in this one, I needed to go inside of these other like pre-comps and where it says, there's like this thing that says, uh, replace this with photo or video. So I just dragged my footage on top of it, turned off the layers below it so they didn't render. I didn't have to worry about those. I did that for each one of these. And then I hit tab and then left arrow to go back to my parent composition. And then we have this kind of like cool echoey effect. Okay, now finally we can talk about transitions. Here's how this works. I'm going to open up studio again. And I'm going to go to two transitions. Now, typically, when you have a transition in After Effects, you have to set a keyframe for the beginning and end. That's how most uh, transition effects in After Effects are set up to be. But I don't have to do that here. I can just click on one of these transitions and apply it to my footage. Now, I can apply it with nothing in there. So it's just going to transition from nothing to nothing. But if I apply this capsule, you can see what it's doing. So this whole block right here is the transition itself. And there is a marker, thankfully, a layer marker set up that says transition it's at that exact point where the frame is covered entirely by the transition. So that's where you want to put the edit point of your footage. So let's look at how this works in uh, 
full. I'm just gonna move Maxon Studio over and look at the final version. So I have footage of uh, a ferry in Seattle. Then I have footage of the Space Needle. And you can see that the next clip starts right exactly at that transition. By the way, a little shortcut in After Effects to help uh, sync with that is to hold the Shift key. If you hold the Shift key, it will automatically try to look for and snap to where that layer marker is. So if you're not zoomed in that closely, holding that Shift key can help you kind of snap exactly to that point, which is really helpful. So then I can preview this. We have the ferry footage and then we have the transition. Ferry footage and then the transition, which is pretty cool. Now this is the final result. I actually went in and changed this a little bit from the default and you can actually totally do that because I was noticing that when I first applied it, it was getting this kind of like stuttering look and you kind of see some remnants of that here. So see how it's kind of like stuttering a little bit with the blur, like it feels kind of like choppy. That drives me crazy, I hate that. And I could always sense it when things are moving too quickly and gets that stuttered look. You just kind of feel it. It feels just like not that smooth. Honestly, I'd probably do it, smooth that out a little bit more too. So what I had to do is actually go into the transition, go into the blur here, and go into Fastbox Blur, which is creating this blur, and increase the iterations. Now this does, I think the default was like seven or something like that, maybe like three. It was, it was pretty low, but that helps it render much quick, more quickly. So then you could go in if you want to and crank up those iterations, really slows down your render time, but also it looks so much smoother when it's animating. But the takeaway here is not oh, this is how to work a blur. The takeaway is, is that if you want to customize the capsules in Studio, you can use the edit page or you can manually go in and make changes yourself. They're just regular After Effects effects. It's just, you know, Max on Studio makes that whole entire process so much more streamlined and easy. A final category here I want to get to is backgrounds. I'm going to go ahead and start here and I go to the start comp that I set up and I'm going to go back to the Discover page and I'm going to go to backgrounds. Now again, there is a host of really cool backgrounds. Again, you just have to mouse over, you don't have to download anything. You just have to mouse over and see what these look like animated, which is really fun. So many cool things to play with. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this one with little squares moseying along there. And here we have our little squares moseying along as expected. But one of the things that's really great is we can create some wonderful possibilities by combining these capsules. So I can go back up in the same composition, go to the text category, and maybe I'll scroll down here a little bit and I'll look for some text that I want. Let's say follow your dreams. That's nice and beautiful, isn't it? Follow your dreams, love it. So now what I can do is go to the edit page and I could go to this follow your dreams that I just applied. And there's currently this kind of like dark blue background. So what I can do is go to the background and take the opacity all the way down to zero. And now we have this cool thing where we have text that's animated and a background that's animated. And it took us what, like three seconds, maybe like 10 seconds, whatever. But still, it was really, really fast. <laughs> I could go and uh, fiddle with the shape. Maybe again, I, I'm really liking this. Uh, mint greenish color, I guess, right now. <laughs> so I'm just gonna make that mint green. Uh, maybe follow your dreams is a little bit too optimistic. Um, just <laughs> just give up. Uh, <laughs> so we have this text. Uh, that's just ridiculous. But we can change it to anything that we want and we have this great composition. Not just a background, not just text animation, but it can be a whole package put together with all of these different capsules in Maxon Studio. Now, talk about a couple other quick things in closing. We have the Discover page that we talked about with the all capsules. There's also this uh, sort filter here. If we want to just see the newest ones first or just our favorites or whatever, we can do that here. We can scroll through the latest and greatest doing these uh, banners here at the top. We also have, again, the edit page. Down here, we also have help, which is great. The um, Maxon Studio user guide is fantastic. Like we've been working really hard at that and uh, the guy who's doing the docs has just been putting his whole heart and soul into making those docs really wonderful, fun to read and very, very helpful. So check those out if you get stumped. And also down at the very bottom, we have a little sprocket, the familiar sprocket where we can go to our settings. So if we don't like the tool tips or if we don't want the video preview, 
previews when we hover over the thumbnails or whatever, we can change that here. Also, if we want to uh, disable the Maxwell Studio shortcut or change it, we can do that here. And maybe once you, you know, have tried a bunch of capsules, you've downloaded that, maybe it's taking up a lot too much space on your hard drive, you can go ahead and clear the downloads here, or if you can clear the favorites or the recently applied, all that stuff can be done through these settings. And again, I alluded to this earlier, but when I click on one of these, um, or when I just mouse over one of these capsules, I get an animated preview, but when I click once on it, then I get the details. I get all this info. I get a bigger preview screen. I could pause it. I get like a playhead with like the time of how long it is. I get this little like expansive thing. So if I want to uh, make that bigger full size inside the window, I can do that. And I, it, going to tell me what it's called, who made it, and a little bit more information about it, as well as these tags, which is great. So you'll notice that one of them is loop and looped. So if I want to just see loop, just search for a loop, these are all the ones that have loop as a keyword. If I need a looped background or a looped animation, these are ones that have loop as a tag, which is really cool. And again, we have the same controls that we have here with the thumbnails, just spread out a little bit and rearrange. We have favorite, download from the cloud and apply. Now seeing all this, you might paraphrase one of my favorite old Saturday Night Live skits and ask, how do you know so much about Maxon Studio? Well, I'm wearing them and I just did. In other words, all of the graphics that you've seen here in this tutorial were made with Maxon Studio capsules in just a few seconds. Very, 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 very quickly, I was able to create all these graphics, lower thirds, all this stuff, purely using Maxon Studio, which is utterly fantastic. You know, I am so incredibly convinced this is gonna change the way that we work in After Effects that I give you permission. If you run into me at like an event or whatever, and you, you see me, if you don't agree that Maxon Studio will change the way you work in After Effects, I give you permission to come up to me and sarcastically shake my hand and call me a liar to my face. I give you permission to do that because I'm so convinced that you're gonna absolutely love Maxon Studio. So again, we are so excited to see what the community does with this and to see where this goes. We have a lot of plans and a lot of fun stuff uh, for the roadmap in the future. So thanks so much for watching. I'm Chad Perkins, take care.